six fifteen and a half. <laughs> Almost late. Welcome to. Late. And um, for the meeting, we have our uh, pre-town meeting, and I'd like to open that up and move right into that. And um, what's your fancy? We like jump you. in. All right, Walt. Well. Good, Walt. Well. I noticed in the budget on page 23, in the line, judicial finance, we jumped from the budgeting 5,000 to 6,000. The budgeting 22,000. Impressive, right? Income from fines, judicial fines. That's a staggering jump that uh, might be perceived in some circles as a uh, quota. As, as what? Quota. Quota? Quota. In other words, we've got to write a lot of tickets so we can raise enough money to pay for the sheriff. Now, to speak to the change from what we've had in constable, the cost of the constable to the sheriff, we pay for the patrol vehicle and all the cost there thereof, and we paid for our constable, so the cost of the actual sheriff's contract is not that far out of what we were meant to do. But to say that we're budgeting an expectation of a fine jump that high could be perceived as pressure on the let's write a lot of tickets. Where and in, in the law enforcement community, that's called a quota. Judicial, judicial fine. Judicial fines. Judicial fines. So in the law enforcement community, that's referred to as a quota, which doesn't go down well. And it's just a jump off page of me, so I just want to address it from that perspective. Well, we started with the, I can't see you, so I'm going to stand up. <laughs> we started with the constable last July 1st, and so we now uh, have a new bill that was from January into February. So we are looking at seven, eight, nine months worth of data, and we do average 30 tickets per month. Um, so we're not, we're basing it on information that we already have, information that we uh, have at hand and do not see where the, info, the, the it's not a quota, but is the pattern that's already been established. So we plugged in a number that we anticipated as the income would be, and then we plugged in what we anticipated would be the expense. So the two offset each other, and there is a good well, amount of sense. the two offset each other now with the quota. There's, there's, we I have, law enforcement. Believe me, I know what I, where from I speak. We have so I, deposits. My only issue is I don't want the perception, which is what it looks like in numbers, mm -hmm. the perception of a quota doesn't look good. That's what I'm speaking to, the perception of a quota. Okay, so, it, you know, if everyone slows down, then I guess we would Well, I'm okay correct. with that because I live out there in FX stretch of 73 where it's mm -hmm. tough getting out of the driveway. So. Mm -hmm. But we do have a lot of different categories where we do have an anticipated income. Um, that's how our budget works. We anticipate if it comes in more or less than that, it's, we have to put in, we should put in something. Robert? Uh, I'd like to point out that in the past when we had the constables, the, the availability of their time, when we, it was difficult to target when they would be on, uh, when they they would be doing their shifts uh, right now, the um, with the sheriffs, uh, I believe you guys have targeted uh, in your contract that you are making a preference for traffic control. So the the time at which they are here is much more optimum for controlling and limiting speeding traffic. So I would anticipate that that would increase radically your number of tickets. Well, let me, let me go back to where the contract says that we have contracted for policing services, mm -hmm. not just traffic. Right. <clears throat> Nancy? I think also in conversations with the deputy that is here, coming here to Rochester, or one of the two of them, um, they don't only do traffic control, they are, I'll stand up too, <laughs> I'm not sure how this happened. Um, <clears throat> when they're in town, they have notified the state police they're here. And oftentimes there are issues that the state police cannot deal with over here, 
and these deputies go and deal with it. Case in point, an accident on Bethel Mountain the other day. His whole day was spent um, up there on traffic control in that respect, um, and he certainly wasn't writing any tickets. Um, on the current bill that we have on our desk for the January and February, um, there also was an investigation into a larceny. I don't know any of the details. I just know what is itemized on the bill. Barb? Yeah, going back to the issue of quota, I would just say when we were interviewing for the budget and finance was part of all of this discussion, uh, when we were interviewing the sheriff and the cohorts, at no time did we ever put on them a limit, like saying, well, this is how much money we want to raise to offset sure. this amount of money. So there's never never a mention of a quota, and it was up to us then to decide what we thought we could generate based, as uh, Patty says, on a, uh, on, a, uh, on a past experience. So bottom line is nobody put any pressure on them at all to say, we want this much money from you on two and three. They actually... Um when we were negotiating with them, they, you know, let us know. Well, you tell us what you want. Do you want us? Do you want to be known as a, as a town that makes money off of tickets, or do you want just coverage? And, and we, you know, the, we did not say that's what we want you to do. I, what this does reflect on, I think, is the less than robust service I think we were getting from our previous constable situation, and so that also reflects some yeah. of the uptick of the of the, the income from that. I don't disagree with the less than robust. Yeah, yeah. 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 So <laughs> it's really... I certainly it's a, understand the, the, your concern for the contrast that you're seeing. No question. I, I am too. But like Dune just said, it, it's, it's pretty much... A, a, it's, it's contrasting because there wasn't a whole lot of enforcement before. Now you're seeing where it should have been. And it looks extreme. More. Okay. I get this that. This discussion explains it. All right. If they didn't bring it up, we wouldn't be having the discussion. Thank you. Uh, it's a good, it's a good question. Yeah. It's a good concern. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got any tickets, have you? <laughs> <laughs> I know where the street teams are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you announce that tonight, too? <laughs> but I will say, if you're going to make a left turn into my driveway, you can wait to see. Always check to see who's passing you while you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Larry? What? No, I was agreeing with it. Oh, yes. I thought you were had something to say. Yeah. 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 Um, is there anything else anybody wants to talk about, or are we going to save it for the town meeting? No. I see a hand, but I don't see a face. No. Hey, well, <clears throat> um, I, it was brought to my attention, and I noticed that um, the tennis reserve has been taken off this budget. Mm hmm and I wanted to bring up um, some points to this, uh, this uh, to our town. Um, the tennis court, as you understand, is a tremendous asset to the town, not only monetarily, but spiritually and all the good stuff. Um, if you're talking about the tennis court, it's a $100,000 asset. We have to take care of that. That's our responsibility. It was built in, um, 12, and uh, so that's eight years. There are little holes going on the um, <clears throat> surface of it now. Water can go into that, and then that's the beginning of the end of $100,000. So I think we have a responsibility to do something about that. So it's really very upset that it was taken off. The other thing is, you have to realize how many people really use the tennis courts. We have an active, active, active group. We have um, Tuesday afternoon, uh, Tuesday and Thursday evening tennis groups, round robins. We have Monday and Wednesday round robins. Friday we have a clinic that everybody is invited to. You come. Um, the, it's, it's very active on top of all the scheduled stuff that we have. And we do have a network if anyone is interested in picking up a racket, give me your email because I'll keep you posted as to what's going on. And um, <clears throat> so and on top of the schedule stuff, you have people that just say, okay, let's go play a game. That, the courts, very often, 
especially in the morning, because it's very hot in the afternoon, <clears throat> in the morning, you, you're, you're standing there waiting for a court. Those courts are used. And on top of, the, um, of that, you have to see in the, very often there are cars from out of state. Well, where are these cars? These cars from out of state, play, these people are playing tennis. They come here because they're staying at our B&Bs, our Airbnbs, our inns. That's important to this town. Not only that, people moving in, they want their recreation. They want the, the river, they want the hiking, they want, they want the tennis courts. The tennis courts are very important. Now, I don't know whether this is cast in stone for this year. I suspect it is. But um, we can't let that go. We cannot let that go as a town. $100,000 is nothing to sneeze at, and that's what they cost. So we have a responsibility as a community to keep those tennis courts up. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so do you have a budget? We, so can we get the can we get the hundred can we get the thousand dollars? No. Why no why not? Well, why wouldn't the tennis courts come under the rec department? Or maybe they did formally? Wouldn't there that has been historically a uh, uh, line item for maintenance of the tennis courts. So, so with a thousand dollars a year, basically, we put it to that. Why, why wouldn't that be under the recreation department and have put that money in there, targeted for the tennis courts? That seems logical. It would be under. Right. Could be. I guess that's a good discussion to have next budget season. So isn't that where the not. skating rink is? Under um, the that is also got it. The uh, skate space. That got moved to the recreation. It's this, part of the park. Yeah, part of the under park. The park line. Uh, it's under the park line, which you could say the tennis could be part of the park also. Yeah, it, and then it's just increase just, the budget for the. <laughs> yeah, that's the catch. Is just increase the budget. Well, that we tennis want to is, be a recreation yeah. destination. That's what yeah. you know, I hear yeah. about all the time. So yeah. it seems like we should prioritize some of these things. Nancy, you have a comment? Dylan, do you want to talk a little bit about? What we went through, looking at all the expenses. Um, they mean the with, attempt to keep the. the and to tennis is not the only not. reserve fund no, it's that not. was not funded. No, no, that's, that's important to point out that tennis is not the only reserve fund that was not funded. We didn't fund the uh, highway reserve fund or the fire department reserve fund. And basically, this was. Uh, a crunch year where a few big expenses piled on and we're hoping that next year that this will even out but in attempt to keep the budget from spiking we had to get uh, a little harsh with the um, <coughs> the reserved and and that was you know that was one of them now I suppose it could be gonna be motion from the floor at the town meeting to add a thousand dollar reserve um, Wait, to, for the tennis court? He should know the answers. Huh. Yeah. Dan. He Dan. should. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork, right? Um, could, not add, could not add an article. Um, I suppose you could up the um, not raised from taxes by $1,000. Can you direct the select board to? No, you, you can suggest, but you can't. Yeah, right, can't yeah, yeah. What were you going to say about that? Well, I would think if we start doing this, then everyone else's reserve fund would also um, be affected, and we would be getting requests for that, too. And we'd be right back where we started when we started the budgeting process. Yeah. yeah, but you'd be getting requests, but the people would be there to vote on it. So then the town is participating in the decision, um, which is what the town meeting is. Is there any money presently in a tennis court reserve fund? It's two yes. two thousand two dollars and eighteen cents. Excellent. No, that was as of June thirtieth. Oh, that was as of, I'm sorry, as of June thirtieth. But what does it cost to research? And, and how, is there an estimate of how much we've spent on maintenance over the last yes, seven years? There has been close to zero 000. spent on maintenance. Start saving zero. Why? Because it hasn't needed any. It was new. rebuilt after Irene, so okay. we got lucky and uh, it was new. So FEMA it's actually been, covered that. Yeah. I would suggest that there's two thousand now, and we haven't spent very much in a while. But it's possibly not an issue for this year's budget. 
Um, Harry had something to say, then Barb, I'll let you. Well, I know my budget's been cut big time. And I mean, we've tried for three years getting out of the air pack, which we really need. And, you know, you might hear, well, you guys ought to do a fundraiser. What's the matter with the tennis court doing a fundraiser? You know, we get a lot of time. The people who use the tennis court use the tennis court for recreation. We aren't recreation at all, and the guys are not paid. Point well taken. Okay. Point well taken. And, um, and I mean, you can have a, no, I, know I know one year we had a big fire on Thanksgiving and half my guys didn't have Thanksgiving. That's a point well taken. But um, th there is a point for for and in, um, for the tennis court because absolutely it, it means money to this town, and that's why we 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 have a budget that's so restricted. We need more people coming in. We need people that are going to say, "Oh, I want to be in this uh, lovely place because I can have outdoor living and et cetera, et cetera." <laughs> you know, there's an yeah. other side to that, and we do need your. Uh, your, uh, um, Barb, Barb had her hand up and then Mason and yeah, Barb. Uh, Just to the point about when we have $2,000 and we haven't spent it, the reason is that to do what we need to do, for the tennis, it's going to cost maybe eight or $10,000. It's not something you could do a dab a little bit here, a little bit there with a, a filler, okay? So we're trying to build up the reserve in order to get the money to fund a, a, a decent resurfacing right. job and not just, you know, a little bit of right. band-aid here and a little bit of glue there. Mason? Uh, following up with Terry there, I have brought forth to the board the concept of allowing uh, to give the tennis courts to a nonprofit Rochester tennis club and let that flourish in that way so that it's not a tax-based issue. On that point, I was just <laughs> listening to the bird chirp. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the bird. Sorry. It is a municipal. Um, it is a municipal thing. It's not. It's not a private club. This is not a club. Right. We're talking right. about a, an asset, right. a hundred thousand dollar right. asset that needs that will need help, I would say, in the next two years. We're, we're going to be in trouble with it otherwise. Well, what do you think of Terry's idea of, of, of having a fundraiser? A market fund? We worth a shot. We could do it. We could do it. Have it through long maybe or something. But if it doesn't work, then what do you do? Yeah. We've had a good time. Uh -huh. Mason, you had something yeah. else you wanted to say about that? Quick question. Are the tennis courts insured for flood? They were covered under flood. Is there a flood insurance policy for the tennis courts? Uh, not no. a specific policy for the tennis Because maybe we need to relocate them to higher ground. Well, they were rebuilt by the right. You could have uh, find the higher ground. That would ground. be a bigger expense, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whose serve is it now? <laughs> no, no. Um, I'm going to sign you up to All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, okay. All right. Um, anything else jump out on anyone from the, the uh, report? Nancy? Do you want to discuss recycling? There was a big increase on recycling also, and that's why we separated that out as a separate article to, to vote on, whereas when everything is piled in over the years, we've tended to um, put most of the, um, the expenses into a couple bulk votes, but we pulled that out because it, it's enough money that we thought it's worth discussing. It's um, a significant step up, and uh, I think everyone values it, and they, not only for the recycling, but for the community aspect. It's, it's another day where you get to mingle with your neighbors and, and, and do something positive, but it's also, um, what was the, 
effect on the the tax rate? The the amount that was. Um, Twenty thousand dollars is about two and a half cents. Two and a half cents. Yeah, I mean it's it's significant. So we pulled that out as a separate article to to you know further discussion on that. Um, Harlan. Twenty thousand dollars a year for the services. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, twenty thousand four hundred dollars. Twenty thousand four hundred. Uh, well, what about like uh, a dumpster kind of setup somewhere? It's a it's also setup. controlled. Is it? Yeah. Is it all legal bullshit? Well, no, if there's, the, there's the, uh, the the composting. Well, and just cost wise. Stuff, just yeah. cost wise. That's all I've thrown out. Um, they you have know, some place. Where you don't have to have an appointment to get in there, you know. I mean, it's open like on Saturdays or something, you know. Or you just well, bring you it can, on the weekend. We, we already pay. On top of that, we pay a, a, a thirteen thousand to be part of the the, um, Bethel, Royal. the Bethel Royal and Alliance. So, and that is, you know, you can go there and take your trash and your recycling there at no cost. Oh, yeah. um, you know, that, that's an option, but. Um, Charge for trash. Well, they charge for trash, but they charge for trash here also. Well, the same with they'll, yeah. pick, they'll, they'll pick up the recycling at no cost at your house. Yeah, if you if you hire the service to come right. and pick your trash. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But it's but there is a cost because you hired them to do it. Right. 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 Um, question: The recycling, as I understand, is basically kind of built based on what our average amount is. Uh, it's not so much the amount they pick it. It's just just a yearly. Um, Set set fee, and sometimes they get a lot, and sometimes they don't. <clears throat> yeah. say one of our concerns right now: recycling's gotten really expensive because China stopped taking all of our terribly mixed up recycling. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, maybe we can make a goal to reduce how much recycling by reducing our use as a town, and try to aim to have like a significant, uh, significant percentage less. Just. Just out of being aware of how much recycling they they take away every year, which I mean, the recycling is much better than trash, but depending on what you're recycling, it's not necessarily that much better than trash. So we're all just aware of how much we're bringing to toss out. Well, that's the one of the questions that I brought up is like, what are the guarantees that what we carefully separate out and bring to recycling <coughs> doesn't end up getting landfilled anyway because there's no market for it. So. That, that happens quite a bit, you know, and it's, um, so in that sense, it's, you're getting your trash taken for free, <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, not real, if you, not if you factor in the cost of your taxes, your property taxes, but it's, um, no, it's, uh, we talked about this for a long time, back and forth, and it's, then one of the issues is also the concern that if we pulled that service away, we'd probably find a lot more trash alongside the roads and on top of Bethel Mountain Road and off of Marsh Brook Road, not Dump Road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, you know, and that, that plays into it. It is an investment in, in, you know, in trying to keep our town, you know, picked up a little bit. I mean, a few years ago, it's interesting, we made the decision to pull the trash barrels off of the park right. and let people take out what they brought in, and it haven't really got much much um, pushback on that, and there's not that much trash, not much less trash in the park than there used to be. I mean, people would use those barrels as a, as a dumpster, and, and it was, um, you know, there's, you know, in the interesting decisions that you have to struggle with on and off. Yeah. I saw now Martha. Yeah. I was just going to say when you when you did when the board did do that, I'm head of the park committee, and I remember being worried, you know, because I thought, oh no, there's going to be trash everywhere. But then I did remember exactly what you said that, that so many people. Sometimes I would see bags of trash that yeah. people yeah. just dumped off, and they couldn't do that anymore. And it it's, has not been bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, what I was going to mention was that uh, composting is the the law starting this summer. Yes. And. Um, for people who don't have a place to compost on their own property, um, you know, if this compost service is very important. Yes. So, um, I assume I know that's part of the actual price of the whole thing, right? Isn't it? 
Actually, yes. I think you have to pay for the composting. I don't think that they take that for I free. Buy I know. I, I, I paid bag, yeah. $4 right, to get right. a bag. I understand that. But there will that, be, yes, they'll be the town is accepting that here. To have yeah. like an extra container or bring yeah. extra. Yeah. I didn't know if that was an extra. There was an extra, and that was part of the cost. I believe that's why the cost is going up. Okay. In, in the next in the next year. Well, it's important. So hopefully, we can figure it's out. It's important for us to know um, how many people in town are using the service. Um, it is does look like a social event, you know, with <laughs> a lot of people that go. Um, but but are we is is seventy percent of the town using it or is ten percent of the town using the services? Is it, we're putting it out there for discussion to see if it's justified to continue to provide the services. Well, I hope so. Is everyone that I wants it taking advantage of it? <laughs> and I think it makes a um, a wonderful fundraiser for the kids. It and does. Um, right. They don't have the opportunity to do as much fundraising as perhaps they once did, and this makes. It, this bottle return really provides a good source for them. Mm -hmm. yes. We even have people like Lizzie sitting out in very, very cold weather. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to make that a regular thing. <laughs> yeah. Mason? Um, with the composting law that's we're approaching, being created within the village area and trying to potentially look at someone locally mm -hmm. developing a composting uh, operation that Definitely may actually, for someone, yeah. may yeah. actually I was be suggest possible. that myself. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not in the village. This, this <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of communities <laughs> have <laughs> composting facilities within their, I'm sorry, within their town. I said there's a lot of towns that, throughout the nation that have composting facilities within a town. Even it's in it's the village. often managed by um, a farmer or a group of uh, volunteers. Mm -hmm. And when uh, when composting is done correctly, that's a valuable resource. Well, uh, yeah, and also the, the, the cost expense to the town that if someone else it looks at it as a, a business here. Mm -hmm. But the issue is they, mm -hmm. they need to meet our town regulations to set up an operation so it works for everybody. I mean, it, it's a, so I don't know if you looked as a board, you haven't yet, but looked into what you would require for someone to set up a business like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Mm -hmm. I think the person would have to meet state standards. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep the birds out. The bears. <laughs> the bears. The bears. The bears. No. Oh, increase the population of the town. By bear? <laughs> by, by bear. bear <laughs> the wildlife, yeah. <clears throat> Just because it's a law doesn't mean it's going to be enforced. You know, that's the problem. Just, you know, the law's coming, but uh, I don't think there's anybody out there that's going to enforce it. No, there is so, no. So there's a lot of expectations on things. the law. Yeah. <laughs> there's laws now for trash, and they're not being enforced. Mm -hmm. So and eventually they are. No, it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and there's nobody else. I, I, I've, got a, I've got a point. All right. <clears throat> so um, in my day job, I run a, also run a company. So I have some appreciation of what it takes to have employees and a budget and expenses and income. And I'm looking at this little company we call our town. And you guys are managing about $480,000 in grant money and about $720,000 in tax money. That's a pittance. I mean, how the heck do you do it? Um, I'm, I'm really astonished, I have to say, and, and this is a very well-run town. I mean, I know you guys are counting your paper clips and, and so forth, and, and we need air packs and we need to maintain our investment, and we need to buy more gravel. I'm sorry, but we need more gravel. Did you see the gravel project? Keep on, I, don't stop now, all right? And we need more paving, and that's one of the things that, that I hear a lot um, up at Sandy's is, you know, what's wrong with the roads here? And these are the worst roads, and we drove all the road all the way from fill in the blank, and my God, you know. I say, well, we're working on it. It's been a rough cross TV here, and they look at me like I'm crazy. So, um, so, if there's any way we can put some more money into gravel and paving, I'm, I'm going to stand for that, and along with the other good suggestions as well. 
we need to we need to tithe ourselves. We need to tax ourselves a little bit more. This is not the part of what's taxing us that is taking a lot of money. It's a really it's really a small amount of money. But there's one thing in here that I thought was a mistake, and I went and, and wrangled Doom. I think he's coming from the getting his mail or something. And I said, "Is this a mistake? I think you have a typo in here." And when you have an organization that's really well run. It's really, it's very legitimate to reward the officers and try to maintain good people and say, job well done. And I thought that this was a typo. It says 33500 to the entire select board for their salary. And I think that's, that's just amazing, <laughs> which you guys got to put on it. So, um, I, and I think we pay $900 for housekeeping. And is that about what you guys make? <laughs> I'm just saying, no, I, housekeeping is a hard job, but I'm saying I think that we should look at, if not now, in the future, paying our slug for members better. Thank you I just much. want to be clear. You said 3000 not 33000 yeah, 3000 yeah, right. Yeah. It almost came out as 32000 I'm sorry. My dyslexia came out. That's what I think. Sure, it's okay. They'd well, like to get that. I wish I'd like to get that. So what is that about? Ten cents an hour. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> count the hours. Think about the time <laughs> that you put in, mm -hmm. and I bet you it's more time now than it ever was because of all the regulations and paperwork. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Because yeah. I have a sense of that with my job, nothing with government. And so. You're here. Kudos. Well, well, coming out to Well, I would like to. Um, extend uh, um, thanks to Larry Strauss, who had the foresight when he left the board to recommend that we hire uh, an assistant to deal with the, the bulk of the paperwork around all the grants, and that's Joan, who is um, really, um, that's, um, I don't know why or how Larry did it all himself, but he, he did, and it's, um, it was really a wise move to suggest that we, that we bring in a little help there, so, yeah. You know, she really um, pulls a lot of weight in terms of the, the paperwork. Yeah. But one of the things that I think, if someone was really looking for something to do and had some time and had the, the interest to um, research of grants, there's there's money out there to be found if someone can take the time. And you know, Joan spends all her time working on a lot of. That's what her focus is, is working on grants, a lot of state grants for most of the road, big road projects we do. Mercifully, Bethel Mountain Road was done at, at very minimal expense to the town, um, pretty much because it was declared an emergency because of the storm, so we lucked out there. But um, in the... Um, you know, in the current activities with, around the Envision Rochester and trying to garner more energy from the townspeople to pick a project and work on it, that's, um, you know, there's, we're actively trying to expand the, the base of, of people that are picking up a shovel and, and, and helping to um, not only just keep the town afloat, but to, like, you know, inspire it and, and, and perk things up a little bit. So, so you thank you, all you other. Is that a volunteer painting cruise? <laughs> well, don't confuse the town yeah. roads with the state yeah. roads. Yeah. <laughs> we could turn a way to figure out to turn recycling into pavement. Boy, we'd be like, making tires. Yeah. So, some boys up in Burlington are doing that with the glass now. Yeah, the glass, gravel. Yeah. yeah. Martha? We, I know you were talking about the lower portion of Bethel Mountain Road, but the upper portion that is The upper become, portion is a, is a, it's is a there roller coaster. Is there anything in the, in the, in the you know, happening sometime in the What's next the year or two, maybe? Maybe you could fix it a little. There's nothing on the plan. Maybe the frost is in the town or state. It's July or so. It's the frost teams that just need to calm down. It's extremely bumpy right now. It is, yeah. Maybe you can make the signs a little bigger that say lots of frosty. How is this? We need it. I'm kidding. Frosty road. Put a don donation jar on the side of the road. Maybe we'll get some money that way. In a hot cab. Some towns do town towns. <laughs> addition to their sales tax, they have a full mm -hmm. town tax. 
you know, a percentage of things that people buy, and then that is an additional slush fund that goes into right. road repair. Right. Or that, like that's that. been brought up in as a at some of the budget um, discussions as uh, something to explore. Most of the towns that do that are um, much bigger towns, and they actually generate a significant amount of money from that. Whereas I don't know, you know, it would be something, but you know, I know I also don't want to drive people away from town. It's like, oh, why, why go shopping in Rochester is for percent more expensive, you know? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Mason, that's it. Uh, in reference to paving, we, we all basically know that you really have to go deep to be able to build a base that will handle uh, paving. We, we, paving is too expensive. We, we ought to think about going to more porous materials, going back to the gravels, and going slower. I mean, at some point, this whole talk about paving and everything else, unless we create whole new concepts, the expense is going to go out the roof. I know down in Warren, they started talking about paving some real big stuff. It all fell apart because they realized how expensive a lot of that would have taken. And you just wait one year, <laughs> and the frost heaves, and, the, and you turn around, you got all the expense. So maybe we should be looking at a different material surface. Barb, you had something to say? I did. Um, I would just also like to say that the Budget Committee could not have accomplished anything in a timely fashion if it had not been for Julie and Becky and Joan um, just providing stuff to us, going out of their way to um, make sure we had the information that we needed to do to make decisions. Um, we are very fortunate in our little small office that we have such a competent group of women. <laughs> yeah. And they're nice, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. With that said, if you turn to the back cover, everyone has their book with them. In the upper corner, where it says town meeting Monday, March second, change the six fifteen to seven o'clock. Oh, oh. Yeah. I know. Or you could come early. You probably do that. How's that off? Uh, is anything else anyone wants to cover? Or, um, I think he appointed I didn't even notice. I mean, I knew it was 7 o'clock, so I didn't even notice it was 7 o'clock. morning, so 7. All right. I guess we'll um, close the pre-town meeting and move on to the regular, regularly scheduled select board meeting. And... Um, at, which has been posted in three places and on the website and emailed. Harlan, did you get an email this time? I, my brother's forwarded it to me, but I, I'm not getting that from the town. Hmm. Hmm. Check your spam trap. I don't know. I, I, Maybe it's spam. Last couple spam. weeks, I heard, last couple of meetings, I've been looking at it. Because I sent it, I sent it out to the whole group, and then I made sure I added you again. That's weird, because the only one I'm getting is one that's forwarded for my brother. Oh, maybe it's going to his fan. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was check that. About that. There was something that. Yeah, check some of the other folders, maybe. But, um, but, and then if you find it in there, you can mark it as not spam, and that should bring it back into your regular inbox. And there's IT help at the library. No, yeah, yeah. So, does anyone have any additions to the agenda at this time? Harlan. I'm missing book, of course. <laughs> uh, you have to ask. Yeah. Update on legal fees. <laughs> Anybody else? I think envision, yeah, envision Rochester. Are we going to be have some time to speak to you tonight? Sure. Um, 
The minutes from the last meeting. Found it with um, a couple, um, a couple of typos in there. But I would move to accept these with the corrections marked on there. Second that. Yep. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. And I guess we're all guests here, but um, the um, Joan is not here. Tony, got any updates from the library aside from IT help? Which can uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, that's an ongoing thing. Uh, yeah. No, I don't have anything new. I guess to add, I did want to mention that the uh, in the seven in this week's seven days is a great article about libraries in Vermont mm -hmm. with a lot of pictures and things. So it's kind of fun to read it. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Read yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, the um, highway crew is not here. Their um, the update is they are headed to Clark's tomorrow morning to pick up a loaner truck. Oh. Not our truck, but a loaner truck. They. Um, they're, um, yeah, that's not, um, mm -hmm. that's not, but the good news is that the, the 550 with the burned up transmission is getting turned around like in five days, not okay. much quicker, and that's that's still under warranty, so. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. The 550 uh, still under warranty. Yes, yeah, it's been our, um, our policy to um, off the vehicles after the warranty expires, but um, the warranty has not on the bigger truck has not garnered real quick action at Clark's. So uh, anyway, we're getting a loaner truck on that. Okay, so the 550 will be back in service soon. Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. Transmission tomorrow. came in today. Yeah, came in today, yeah. and they're going to. Williams had their footman in tomorrow morning. Yeah, cool. All right. Yeah. Just in time for the weather. Yeah. Um, there is um, just on the subject of roads and trucks. The curb that's right outside the parsonage has been <coughs> taken out, and I, I, there's huge chunks of uh, asphalt that should probably be removed before the next snow because it will definitely foul up my Ketchum's machine. They're big. They, they took out the curb. Whoever did it, just point that out. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Thank you, Terry. You got anything that you want to report on the utility front? Well, hydrants. Mm -hmm. They ever going to get done? I mean, they're frozen in now. Except for the ones the towns did. That is, um, I. Did bring that up to Mike. Um, he hadn't twice. done any. The only ones that got done were the ones the town crew did. <clears throat> and you know, middle of the night, you have a fire that's going to yeah, be Yeah, no, that's going to yeah. rock up hard. Yeah. For one, you're not going to be able to turn the wrench only a quarter turn or a half turn. All right. Excuse me, Terry, I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding. Uh, removing snow from okay, the Okay, that's hydrants. what I thought, so yeah. digging out this yeah. nice around the thing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Dave Donna did that for years? Yeah, he yeah, but stopped. He stepped down this year. Yeah. Too bad. He did an excellent job. Nope. All right. Um, we're on to new business. We have a request for permission from the Vermont Grand Fondo cycling event to use roadways on Saturday, June 27th um, next year. And we'll also notify the Sheriff Department and Ambulance Service for that day. And I move to approve that. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. yep. And we also have a proposal for the Vermont Senior Games events in Rochester on October the 3rd. 
20. And I would move to approve that. Right. Second that, I'll be there. You'll be there? Are you going to be in competing? I'm, You're I'm a senior? Yeah, all right. <laughs> then, <laughs> I'm beyond a senior. Then that's not a, um, um, that's not a, a conflict of interest. Then, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want some details on when it's taking place. I so just wonder what's taking place. October? I can um, give you a handout. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it's in October. No, but is where? Uh, oh, town. Is, is down at the place? school. Okay, that's right. Is, jo is right. George Moltz in charge of that? Yes, George Moltz is in charge of that. Spearheading it. Cool. Yeah. And it'll there's a, a job. It'll be five in charge of it. K walk mm -hmm. and the cornhole competition. <laughs> All right. That's uh, yeah, George Moltz. Okay. He doesn't need a signature. Yeah. Alrighty. Is there any other items? And the um, Envision Rochester. What do you you want to give us a little update? Yeah. Let's let's see what. Andrew, we'll give a general update. Sure. Steve, I'll speak uh, specifically okay. to the this one to the okay. school. All right, so um, Envision Rochester is a loose affiliation of characters um, just trying to spur on some um, interest in uh, making our town, uh, keeping our town um, uh, sustainable. Uh, as we've talked about tonight, there are things that we need and that we want and we like and uh, looking for opportunities to, to get those things for, for ourselves and for our town, for our own quality of life and to attract <coughs> new folks and families to our community. So to that end, um, this uh, group calling ourselves at the Vision Rochester had a few community meetings and asked community members, so what would be important for you for the community? Um, and we came up with 13 different topics, broad topics, and there were dozens of subtopics underneath of those. So last Thursday, we had a community workshop at Pierce Hall and we asked the folks, out of these 13, what do you think are the four most important topics that would move us forward, um, move our community forward? And what they selected were, there were 48 people there at the meeting. They selected um, arts and events, um, as something that brings people to the community and gives us quality of life. Um, education and the school building, repurposing the school building. Um, and Robert's gonna talk a little bit more about that. Um, Young families, attracting young families to the community. Um, and that group is going to focus their efforts on daycare, which they believe is a real need for the community. And the fourth was um, commerce and, and jobs. Um, and there's an agriculture group, too. And an agriculture group, I'm sorry, yes. 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 Um, so all of those groups are, are going to meet again in some fashion or another and continue to work um, towards their, um, towards something that they, they come up with. Envision Rochester isn't telling them what to do. They don't have to run their, their ideas through the committee. It's just empowering folks to do things that uh, will help the community and to do it with um, the intention of having broad community support um, for, for whatever they do. Uh, we're going to plan, we have, are planning a, another meeting uh, two months out from last week's meeting where we'll bring those groups back together. They'll tell us what they learned or what they decided or what they're going to do. Uh, we'll talk about um, what each group is doing, give them feedback, um, see where maybe they can share resources, um, like the events group might want to share re ideas with the school group, uh, etc. Uh, and just try and keep it going. We might have an opportunity to get some other small groups uh, started if we get uh, get the critical critical mass. It's always um, a capacity <coughs> to a town this small, getting enough people to come out and, and uh, pick up the flag and wave it long enough to make something happen. So um, up here up here are some of the flip charts, the notes that the four groups. I think we have three of the five five groups. Um, three of the five posted up here. They're also all going all to be posted on the Envision Rochester um, webpage on the um, White River Valley community calendar. 
which if you haven't seen that, um, some folks from Rand, uh, Hancock have put that together, and uh, Google White River Valley Calendar, Community Calendar. And Hancock got all their events on there, and we've got Vision Rochester, so check that out. And some of this information will be posted on that website. Anybody that was at the meeting there want to add, add anything else? Yeah. It was very well attended, like you mentioned, and I was part of one of the groups, and I felt it was pretty productive, you know, and it was also really positive, which I like. Okay. Thanks. So I was part of the um, uh, the school and the education and school uh, group, and. Um, at this point, we're in the, primarily in the information gathering stage. One, we're the, the, just from from my standpoint, a, a brief overview. We have two buildings, um, each of which has two parts. We have the south main portion of the elementary school, and then we have the north end of that, which encompasses the the, the kitchens and the, the gymnasium and, and another another uh, classroom. And then we have the high school, which envisions the West End, which is the auditorium and the shops and uh, the music room and the, the um, uh, home ec. And then we have the rest of the, 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 um, the east side of that building. Now, the, the school district is, has been has started on the process of evaluating the buildings to decide which one it wants to be in because it really doesn't want to maintain two buildings. Um, but you know some of the proposals that the engineer, you know, the engineers have come up with are envisioning spending a lot of money so that they can do it all with one building. What really makes the most sense is that the school has all of one building and part of the other, and that the tenants of that other building are compatible. Um, uh, there are, there's a lot of interest in having space of a municipal um, uh, type of space that has, I mean, there's requests from other, other groups of the Envision Rochester of saying, oh, we would need space for, let's say, daycare or whatever. This ideas are just starting to flow on what would you, we would do with the rest of that space. Um, so um, uh, there's been ideas from you know daycare. The other is get one less building, move all the town offices down to to, to one of the buildings. And um, uh, again, it's we're just right at the initial information and idea gathering stage. So primarily, what I'm here to do is to ask the select board if they're interested in working with us on this. On, I mean, we're, we're not asking to represent you, we're just asking if this is something that you that, that you would uh, like to work with us on. Well, we're an exploratory group, and so we were coming to the select board first, and then we're going to go to the school board to basically get your blessing in doing a kind of community survey to see just even fact, due to outreach and get brainstorming, not that we're going to have all the ideas but to really uh, test the pulse of the community uh, about the interest in repurposing um, that building. And uh, according to Amy Wilt, the daughter, the, the school board at this point is much more open to community getting involved. And there, there's, a lot of a time. there's a lot of information. That, I mean, there, there's lots and lots of issues in which can be, we can gather information. There's a lot that's been gathered by the schools, but there's more to be gathered, such as I mean, the heating systems upgrade are, would be a, an enormous expense, but there's also things like Efficiency Vermont and some other organizations that have have done such, have provided, you know, grant money for that sort of thing. Um, uh, these, the, there's a lot of the of work from the that they did from the engineering survey, engineering work for the school, and you know that can be brought together and shared. Yeah. Uh, so um, we're, we're, we're looking for ideas and, and gathering ideas, but also gathering other information there, to put it together. Is there any thought about uh, 
part of it being used as commercial space, or is it all, all municipal oriented at this point? It's, it's again, we're, we're totally open for yeah. all ideas. The, yeah. That's the point to do an exploration mm -hmm. to really feel out the community, yeah. and the group itself is very enthusiastic and energetic. And uh, mm -hmm. but we can't work in a vacuum or an asylum. We really do need to work with at least the blessing of these boards so that we can go out and get the information and then bring the information back and read it and you know see what the determinants are for the possibilities. Yeah, and there's also issues such as you know security for the school. Sure. And such. sure. Yeah. Um, it, it should be known too that, that we don't own that building. So okay. we're 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 discussing something that we don't have any control over as we're spectators that's one, that's at this point. Of the, that's one of the so I just want story. that to be to be known. Options. We're not decision makers at right. this point. So. But that's one of the options for ownership that we're exploring. That's one of the first, when, when, first when list. That, because I think that the town comes. would not like to see it go elsewhere, the ownership right. from from the feedback. But that's what we're gonna find out. No, options I think it's ownership. I think that's positive and, and I, I do believe that an open discussion about the use of those buildings will, will bear fruit when you get um, you know a lot more people involved. Uh, uh, it, it had seemed to me that the school, the school board was operating in the vacuum, right? Because they were very very focused on just school, right. yeah. and just school financing, and so I made but, some suggestions. But it's really gone beyond beyond that at this yeah. point. We need. But the school board is willing now you yes. know, yeah. to even explore options for ownership. Yeah. So it's, it feels like a good moment. Yeah. It makes good sense. I, I would move to break out the holy water and give our blessings to <laughs> And we would be open to having yeah. this type of yeah. discussion with the school board, too. Yeah. We had yeah. our next yeah. approach yeah. We went first board. to you, and our next meeting yeah. will be the school board. Yeah. So be it. That's good. Is it under um, after 50, that building? Well, don't know. That'd be something to explore. Nineteen seventy-one. There was Act 250 then, wasn't there? Yeah. yeah it's under Act 250. It's going to be here. Going to be able to Nineteen seventy or seventy-one. But there, even, even in the repurposing process, it can still have a strong educational oh, purpose in yeah. it. You know, mm -hmm. without necessarily being under the auspices of public school education. We in, talked um, about so many things, even having adult education and having, you know. One of the, um, one of the tough, I was involved in the group that was talking about um, young families and youth, and then the point was um, put forth very strongly that it's not the lack of jobs that is keeping people from moving here, it's the lack of, of child care. And you know, if you, it's all well and great that people can work from home and, and cyber commute, but if they don't have anyone to take care of young children, it's hard to have young families be motivated to. That that was a real um, missing link in the in the services here. And so yeah. that was, um, I think that that educational um, aspect would would probably have a long term um, life in that in that facility down there. Martha, you had yeah, something? I was just going to say, I was on that same committee, and Asha LaBeja brought that up. Right. She's expecting baby number four, and she said that it's very hard to get good child care. When I first moved here 35 years ago, I needed it, and we were lucky enough to have Dandelion Daycare next to the mm -hmm. school, but that hasn't been around for a number of years, and I think that would be a perfect, that's just a comment, a perfect use for part of that building, because... You know, parents bringing their kids to school, bring the younger ones over there too. Mm -hmm. And um, also because we do, I'm glad to hear that you're thinking about using part of the other building, not just getting rid of, because we've got the gym and the, you know, gym and cafeteria in one building, but then the other one we've got the auditorium, which the players have put a lot of money into, especially after I read, and all the other things that are important to our town. We need, you know, there are parts in both buildings that are important. Yeah. Can we have yeah. Is the One Planet program available to expand their offerings for daycare? Are That's they in the discussion? That's a great I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Harlan? Yeah, um, now, the buildings were like given to the supervisory union, right? So they, the maintenance on them they were, is the responsibility of the supervisory union. 
right? No. No, they're part of the, the, the school district. School which is district. Emerge school, school district of Rochester. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's not supervisory union. Well, uh, okay, I got my turn screwed up. Right. Yeah, yeah, those they they own it. Where it was pre previously, it wasn't the towns. It was the Rochester school district. Right. Now that's merged with the Rochester Stockbridge school district. Okay. So they together own that building mm -hmm. as well as the Stockbridge school. Okay. I mean, stuff. like, say, like a new roof. Who foots that? The combined the, the school, school district. district. Yeah, so well, I just, it just seems like I just read something where there's like, you know, a lot of work that's got to be done, maintenance work on the buildings that we're using. As, as all, all the buildings. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to sit down. So yeah. if we, say, if you, we move all our stuff, you know, if we, if we start moving into the, you know, the, the building and you, the town uses more and more of it, are they more, are we more liable for maintenance on that or is it, you I'm just wondering the bottom line on it all. That's well, we all would want that. That's what an exploration is going to produce is okay. information okay. that that will then put out there and people will be making decisions. Okay. It's a town process. That's the way we see it. And mm -hmm. as other towns have also gone through this with their losing some of their elementary schools, there's also um, other other t other towns are doing things with their buildings that we may be able to reach out and find out what their yeah, you know weird. what their grant what they did get for grants and how they went about yeah. it and how they're see, using so them. So there's there's also legal issues of if the school owns one building but part of another does it piece it out or, or can it have a joint joint ownership mm -hmm. of part of the building and then there's maintenance issues in, mm -hmm. and in, in the future and such and also issues if you're getting a grant which covers both entities it's mm -hmm. simpler if it's a municipal right. school combination but I mean we're also talking that if you have a daycare maybe it's in the kind of daycare space that's leased out right you know, all these, it, it can get real determined. complex real yes. fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why we need to gather a lot of information. Yeah. Well, it's, um, it's exciting that there's um, people animated and energized over, um, you know, working on some of these projects. It's sort Thank of a 21st you. century farm raising concept. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, know? right. I mean, you know, it's, it's our town. Let's pull it together and what do we want to do with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Which is very much the premise of the Working Communities uh, grant that Vic and I are representing Rochester. Mm -hmm. So you know that we won the planning grant mm -hmm. stage and now mm -hmm. we'll be meeting with the feds for uh, like three all day meetings to sort of work out funding and it's a process too, but it's all kind of connected, the same sort of idea that's very much directed towards economic development and especially sort of addressing uh, more marginal populations. But the idea of sustaining the communities is very core to it. So. Well, we seem to be succeeding. A lot of people are moving into the valley. I think affordable housing is probably the main driver in the market. I mean, I hear everyone talk about everything except the one in the charity shop and ultimately you have to be able to afford it and young families can afford 150 175 thousand dollar houses and that's what they're looking for and the closer we can get to that to that mark for people the closer the more people will want to move that comes before daycare you got to be able to afford the roof over here Robert, you had something else? Uh, it's, it's somewhat related. They just had a question because you dealt with us so much with FEMA and such. Are there grants available for for community resiliency I mean, in terms of being able to survive more storm events and such? I mean, where one, um, one of the are, issues for the, for the school is it's in floodplain. So there are some things that could be done to mitigate it. But yeah. Not through FEMA, okay. but there, there can be money. There can be yeah. get money out there. Um, for mitigation, hazard yeah. mitigation. You have to go up a different avenue, but there's there can be some money out there, but not through FEMA. Okay. Yeah. All right, to be continued, I hope, I assume. Um, 
guys find the book? The book. The book. Um, actually, um, actually, no. <laughs> but Nancy and I uh, did spend some time downstairs, and we found some other things. But um, we didn't find the, the book that you're referring to. What you find? Uh, we found um, a bunch of audio tapes uh, documenting select board minutes and school board minutes to go back 20 Not years, about 20. I think 1999 was the last one I, yeah. I saw, but not, so not... We're talking, the period we're talking about before that. No, no, yeah, it has nothing to do with that, but I, that's, that's what we found. Oh, and you... Those the tapes you that... You around there with some microphone or something? I'm afraid I haven't had time. No, that, I, just, just, just I will be. No, I, I, you know, just, I will. Just asking, that's all. I don't think we've been advised that it's back there yet, right? Right. It's not back there yet. So these are tapes that had been used then to transcribe notes out of? Correct. So, so they're nothing really that needs holding on to them? No, I, I, no, I think they can all go away, but yeah. they were in storage down below. Okay. The um, other Kinley, you had asked about the update on the, the legal fees, and I don't believe there's anything has changed since the last time you asked that at 63, $63,133.98 over the past three years. Um, if you look in the budget, what did we, um, what did we put in the budget for legal fees? Fifteen. Fifteen. Not that amount. Not that amount. No, we're being optimistic 15. that we can um, get clear of this. Fifteen is what comes to mind. Yeah. So. Um, is that what? It, I'm pretty sure fifteen is what we put in there. Yeah. yeah. Is it is it going to stop now or what? We'll find out. <laughs> I can't answer that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. But, um, so, if um, anything that anyone else wants to say, I think that that pretty much covers our agenda for the night. And we'll see you guys um, next week for the, the the full group. Yeah, thank you for coming out and uh, for the preview for the town meeting. And we'll um, see you next week.